Welcome to part one of my series covering everything you need to know when cruising from Port Canaveral. The first installment will be what you need to know when driving to port. Later we'll cover lodging, flying in, restaurants around the port, and what to do before and after a cruise if you've got some extra time. We're coming in on A1A, heading east from the mainland. If you're not used to Florida, get ready from this. Get ready for this. Check out this guy passing me on the left. I'm doing about 66 here. I'm sorry, that's just Florida. Something you're gonna have to get used to when you're here. Today, I think we've got Disney Fantasy over there to the left. The Conquest, the Carnival Conquest is parked on the other side of her. And hard to see from this far out is the Carnival Mardi Gras far off to the right. Port Canaveral is separated into two sets of terminals, Terminal A and B. Terminal B includes 1, 2, and 3. Terminal A is 5 through 10, but really just 5, 8, and 10, I believe, are actually in use. And on the B side, you've got 1 for Carnival, the brand new terminal they just built. And you've got 1 for Royal Caribbean. And 3 for Carnival, the brand new terminal they just built. Now if you want to get anything before you arrive at Port Canaveral, restaurants, gas, anything, you really need to do that before you leave the mainland. Once you leave, once you cross Indian River and you head out to Port Canaveral, unless you head south down toward Coco, there is nothing out here. There are a few restaurants, but they usually don't open until 11. There is one restaurant, Grills, and I'll cover that a little bit later in this video and in more detail in a later video in this series. Here we are heading into Terminal B. On the left side here will be the few restaurants that are down on uh, Restaurant Row near the waterfront. Fish Lips, Grills, Florida Atlantic Seafood, also a couple of uh, party boats that go out right here. Now here's where you'd take a left if you're going to Terminal 1 for Royal Caribbean. And Terminal 1 does have a few restaurants right next to it. It's the only terminal in Port Canaveral that has restaurants within walking distance. We keep, pa we keep going past Terminal 1. And we're headed to Terminal 3, the new Carnival Terminal. There is one fast food restaurant in the Port Canaveral area, and it's up here on the right. It's a subway. There we go. There's the subway. I think it is the only fast food in the Port Canaveral area, unless you head south toward Coco. On the left here is Victory Casino Cruise. I'm going to take that at some point and record it for the channel. And there we go. The first glimpse of the new Carnival Terminal coming into view, Carnival Terminal 3. haven't cruised out of there yet, but they just started using it a couple of months ago. Now as we approach Terminal 3 on your right is the only hotel that is within walking distance of a terminal. That's the Holiday Inn. I think rooms start around $290 and are booked up almost a year in advance. 
Strangely, they don't really have a parking cruise package though, so you'd have to move your car, I believe, the day of the cruise. But it is easy walking distance to the terminal. Ahead is Jetty Park. Turned around here to get another look at Carnival Terminal 3. Brand new. Plenty of parking. This is the rear of Terminal 3, as seen from Grills. I'll have a full review of Grills in a later video in the series. Here we go, headed over to the A side, Terminal A, 5, 8, and 10. Very easy to get in and out of all of the parking for all of the terminals on both sides. Terminal A is a little easier though, as there are no competing venues here. There are absolutely no restaurants, entertainment, gas stations, nothing on the Terminal A side. Drawbridge up ahead. I'll post a video. We got stuck at this drawbridge last week. I'll include that if anyone's interested. There's the car, the Disney Fantasy, and they're at Terminal 8. We took our Liberty Cruise out of Terminal 8. If you'd like to see actual uh, driving into the parking deck and everything, check out my Liberty Cruise Day 1 video from a couple of years ago now. Very easy to get in and out of that terminal. continue down this road there is only the old Air Force Station which is now Space Force and Terminal 10 which the Carnival Conquest is currently parked at. Carnival Conquest not in service yet but I believe they're in port today for refueling and restocking resupplying. Lots of parking right at the terminals, which I do love. Turning around, heading back out of Terminal A. Side A. This is Terminal 10 right here. Even on busy cruise days, it's usually pretty easy to get out of these terminals. To your right here, you'll see a semi-truck stuck on a barge. Happens all the time in Florida. Don't even worry about it. They usually get off. Here we approach on Restaurant Row, Terminal 1. So Terminal 1 is straight ahead for Royal Caribbean. I've only seen Royal Caribbean ships out of Terminal 1. I think any ship could be assigned to Terminal 1, but they've got their branding all over it. And you'll see the walking exit there. Right ahead is Grills. Grills is the only restaurant open in the morning if you cruise. I think they open almost every day at 7 a.m. I'll have a video upcoming. There we go. A full review of Grills later in the series. Up ahead, you've got Florida Atlantic Seafood on the right and Fish Lips, that blue building up ahead. Okay, so let's talk about parking. If you look at this video, you can see the terminal parking here on the right and the cruise ship terminal right there on the left. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see on the Carnival 
Terminal 3. How close parking is to the boat. Now that's $17 a day. Now if you want to park off-site, you save $6 a day here, 2.4 miles from the terminal. So it's a bit of a ride, but uh, $10.95 a day, so you save $6 a day. So you'll save about $42 on a seven-day cruise. You'll have to decide if that's worth not being right at your car. I think they have two shuttles a day, uh, like at 8.30 and 10.30, that run when you come back in on your cruise to bring you back here. In the distance here, you can see a cluster of hotels. You might be able to make out that home to suites there. That's 1.5 miles from Terminal 3 and about 1.2 miles from Terminal 1. None of these are really close. And I'll cover a full review of all the lodging choices that are within a two mile area in, in a later video in this series. Several have park and ride. But it's also very easy to just run your car over to one of these parking decks, depending on how much money you can save. This is the view from Exploration Tower, by the way. Okay, here's Jetty Park. If you find yourself having some time before a cruise, if you come in a day early, $15 gets you into Jetty Park, $15 per vehicle. And these are the kind of views you get as the cruise ships leave. I love doing this if I'm early into the cruise. Now here we are, Exploration Tower. This is free to get in right now, but pretty much only, I believe, uh, Thursday through Friday. Is that what it says on the sign? Oh, only Friday, Saturday, Sunday now. But it's free to get in. It has wonderful views. And I don't know how long it'll be free to get in, but it certainly is now. And here's the view you have from Exploration Tower. Absolutely beautiful views, 360 degrees. Restaurant Row down there right below us. Fish Lips is the blue building there. Terminal 1 there to the right. Thank you for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. Next week will be everything you need to know when flying into Orlando for Port Canaveral.